simplest terms, God, you are simply good. For all that you've done, all that you are, all that you've been, oh God, we say that you are good. God, you are our salvation. You are our strength. Jesus, we honor you and we give you glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you are good. Come on, if you know he's been good, just lift your hands. Come on, I don't know how he's been good to you. You know how he's been good to you, but you just got to worship him for the goodness that is the essence of who he is. I told the praise team that this morning, we've just got to reflect on his goodness simply because he doesn't change. No matter what we do, no matter how far we get away from him, no matter how many times we sin and commit unrighteousness, he stays the same good God. And so simply for that, God, we say that you are good and your mercy endures forever. I don't know about you, but I need a little mercy sometimes because I know I do wrong. When he tells me to go right, I go left sometimes. And so I need his mercy that is perfect to suit my case. That's the good thing about our God is that he gives us individualized mercy and grace. What I need mercy for, you don't need it. But what you need mercy for, I may not need it, but he still remains good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we just want to lift your name this morning. Come on, y'all know this one. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you're saved and you know it and you know that the Lord is your salvation, come on, lift up a worship. Because he is with us, we don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Come on, you don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid. One more time, say the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be? I will wait. So while he's here, we trust you. I will trust in you. Come on, say it again. I will wait. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust. Say, I will remain confident. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, say, I will remain. I got confidence that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, say, the Lord.
expecting in this I will see the goodness of the Lord I will remain confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord come on help me say to believe that for yourself that you're going to see the goodness of the Lord one more time I will remain no matter what it looks like you're going to see the goodness you are good good oh you are good good You are good. You are. You are good. You are good. Come on, say it again. You are good. You are good. You are good. Come on, say it. Oh.
yes. Play it, musicians. Come on, you can join with us. Those who all that have tuned in, we're just having a Holy Ghost good time. Play it again. Come on, celebrate, praise team. Come on. Come on, one more time, one more time. Then we're going to go in. You are good. Yes. You are good. So good. Real good. Real good. Do I have any witnesses in here? Do I have any witnesses that are tuned in? That know that the Lord is good. Lord, you are good. Yes, you are. You are good. You are a lily in the valley. You are the bright and morning star. You are the alpha and omega. You are the beginning and the ending. You are good. Yes. You are good. And your mercy. Oh, come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Yes, Lord. You are good. Yes, Lord. You are so good. Even when we didn't deserve it, you are still good. During the good times, you're good. On top of the mountain, you're good. In the valley, you're good. No matter what state, you're still good. Before COVID, you're a good. During COVID, you're a good. After COVID, you're a good. God, you're just good. God, you're just good. Yes, Lord, you're good. You're good, Lord. You're a good God. He's a good God. Do I have any witnesses that know he's a good God? He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Woo! You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yes. 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 Woo. He's good. Do I have any witnesses that know that he's good? Right there in your home. Those of you all that are tuned in, I wish you'd type in right now. He's good, he's good, he's good. He's good, he's good, he's good. Yes! He's good! He's good! 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 Yes! 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 Yes!
I wish you'd lay hands on your own self. Nobody needs to touch you. You can lay hands on your own self and just declare, you've been good to me. You've been good to me. Yes. Praise team. I wish you'd lay hands on your own self and declare that the Lord has been good to you. He's been good. Yes! I feel deliverance. I feel deliverance. I feel deliverance. Deliverance. Am I shut up, man? Am I home? There's an apostolic anointing in this place. An apostolic in this place. I just heard the Lord say, it don't matter. It don't matter. I don't know what that means to you, but I heard the Lord say, it don't matter. God, give us a fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing in your life. Those of you all at home, fresh anointing on your job. Fresh anointing. Fresh wind. Blow. Blow. Glory. 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 Fresh anointing, right there where you are, receive the fresh anointing, receive the fresh miracles, signs, and wonders, miracles. Signs and wonders. Miracles, signs and wonders. Miracles, signs and wonders. Miracles, signs and wonders. Stay right there. Miracles, that's the place of miracles. Right there. That's the place of miracles. Have my second. Rub my soul. Rub my gamma. In the name of Jesus. Miracles. Signs. Miracles. 
Today is a day of healing. Today is a day of healing. I don't care what the sickness is. I want to lay hands on each of you because I feel healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 In the name of Jesus. Glory. 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 In the name of Jesus, glory, glory, in the name of Jesus, glory, in the name of Jesus, glory, oh, those of you all that are tuned in, you can connect with this anointing. can connect with this anointing. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I declare and I release healing to you right now those that are in this sanctuary healing
to the New Life experience. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Glory. Thank the praise team, praise dancers, thank you. Musicians, thank you. of you we bless you in the wonderful miraculous name of Jesus I'm trying to get myself together so that I can give you what the Lord has released this moment I know many are going through so much but I still believe that God is still God I don't care what we're facing Elder Jarvis, it doesn't matter. Deacon Arthur, it doesn't matter. So again, we thank you for tuning in this morning to the New Life Experience. Those that are here, thank you. We leave it open. Those that feel comfortable can come. Those that's not comfortable, they can view us online. So glad to see Sister Kiki and husband with us this morning. Mother Nancy, Mother Mears with us. All of you all young people they are <laughs> praise God um, I'm going to call your attention because let me tell you there's one Lord one faith and one baptism and that's the name of Jesus no other name whereby we can be saved I know many preaching different things, but I still believe the name of Jesus. That Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for the apostolic anointing that's in this place. Oh, God. We're going to call your attention this morning to the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis. Something that the Lord gave to me, and I believe that it's, it will bless you. He released it last week, but as you know, things got crazy last week. And he just said, no, I want to have my way. Hallelujah. So we had a second Chronicles experience where the priest could not even minister by way of of the glory but this morning Genesis chapter 22 Genesis chapter 22 I'm reading from the New Living Translation we thank God for Lady Bell we honor her Genesis chapter 22 going to read a little bit. Verses 1 
through 14. And again, I'm in the New Living Translation. So if you're in the King James, it may read slightly different. But for the sake of teaching this morning, I want to give you this word. <coughs> Listen at this, Elishan. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied. Here I am. Watch this, Elder Pat. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Let me pause right there for a minute because the Lord just dropped this on me before we release our subject and finish reading. Uh, some of y'all, I need about 10 people that are here. I need about 15 people that are online. Watch this. Uh, this is a moment right here that some of you all, AD, can catch and shout on this moment. Brother Chris, here's something that you can catch and shout, Brother Rodney. For those of you all who can catch this in the spirit, who can catch this prophetically, watch this. He said, uh, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Uh, watch this. I need for y'all to catch this now. Here it is. He just dropped this at me. Uh, uh, get ready for God to show you your mountain. Oh man, y'all y'all missed that. Y'all y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all y'all missed that prophetic word. Mother Mirrors, they missed that. Uh, let me say it again. The Lord just dropped this on me to tell you all that are tuned in. Get ready for God to show you your mountain. Uh, you thought that that was your mountain, but that's not your mountain. But the Lord said, "Get ready. I'm getting ready to show you your mountain." Verse three. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him along with his son Isaac then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about on the third day of their journey Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance stay here with the donkey Abraham told his servants the boy and I will travel a little further we will worship there watch this uh oh hey oh he just dropped this on me and then we will come right back uh, he just dropped another prophetic word on me to give to you all uh, y'all ready y'all ready for this those those that are tuned in here's another one he just dropped on me I need about 15 people to catch this in the spirit you will come back <laughs> Oh God, y'all missed that again. Y'all missed that again. Y'all just missed another place to shout. Y'all missed it. We ain't even gave the subject yet, but the Lord is already dropping these revelatory nuggets. This prophetic word, he told me to tell you, I'm getting ready to show you your mouth. And then guess what? You coming right back. <laughs> Some of y'all don't understand. You on the comeback. You on the comeback. You may have been down. You may have been in the valley, but the Lord said, I'm getting ready to show you your mountain, and you are on the comeback. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Here it is. Verse 6. Come on, y'all got to let me get through this. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son. Mm. Oh, Lord, he just dropped something else on me again. Y'all ready for this one? <laughs> Woo. Some of y'all are used to preachers, but the Lord said, I'm releasing fathers. Some of y'all have been used to just preachers, but the Lord said, I'm releasing fathers. Fathers who can speak to 
into your spirit. Father, that can release blessing. A preacher can't release no blessing on you. He does not walk in that authority, but a father can release the blessing. The blessing that's been stored up in heaven can be unlocked by father. God said, I'm releasing fathers. Oh, no. Yeah, you got preachers that'll preach the word, but a father will unlock it. He said, watch this. Some of y'all about to run smack it to your father. Oh, God. God, the father has a different voice. Father has a different voice than a preacher. Father has a different authority than just a preacher. The Lord said, I'm releasing fathers. And those fathers are going to unlock the keys and the treasure. They're going to unlock the treasures in you because the father has the keys to unlock what's in you. Oh God. Verse 9. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. Mm. He just dropped this on me. Only a father can handle your knife. <laughs> Only a father can handle your knife. Everybody don't need your knife. Everybody don't need a knife to cut on you. Everybody don't need a knife because they don't know how to handle a knife. But a father know how to handle the knife, oh God. At that moment, verse 11, I'm going to make it through, y'all. The angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Oh, he just dropped this on me. Can the angels call your name? Oh God, it's so much revelation. He's just dropping. He's speaking. I'm, as I'm talking to you, he's talking to me. Hey, the question, do the angels even know your name? Can the angels call your name? Yes, Abraham replied. Here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Uh-oh, he just dropped this on me. What you holding back? Oh, God. Oh, God. Some of y'all holding some stuff. What, what, what you holding back that you don't want to give? What you holding back that you don't want to give to the Lord? I need somebody to type this in. Stop holding back on God. Stop holding back on God. I need somebody to type that in right there. Those of you all that are tuned in, I need y'all to type that in. I need new life. I mean, those that are here, make sure you write that down. Stop holding back on God because God didn't hold back on you. Oh, God. Abraham. Did Abraham look up? And saw a ram caught by his horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yara, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. This morning, mm, for the sake of a subject so you know where we're going for direction, we're going to talk about a requisition for the provision. A requisition for the provision. I got about 15 minutes to release this word. A requisition for the provision. Well, overseer, what is a requisition? A requisition, watch this, is the act of requiring something to be furnished. Some of y'all work in, 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 in corporate and, and you deal with people, uh, a requisition, you deal with requisitions. A requisition is the act of requiring something to be furnished. 
So we're talking about requisition pro for provision. So that raises another question. Now we know what a requisition is, the act that requires something to be furnished. Well, what's a provision? So you're asking me the act that requires something to be furnished. What's a provision? A measure taken beforehand to deal with a need or contingency. A measure taken beforehand to deal with a need or contingency. So what am I saying? Watch this. Watch this. Let me put it together. Uh, well, the Lord said there's an act of requiring something to be furnished. Uh, 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 there's a, uh, the act of requiring something to be furnished as a measure taken beforehand to deal with something you need. Okay, let me say it again. There's an action that I'm requiring from you that needs to be furnished. Watch this. To, to release the measure beforehand, not after you get it. The problem is, the problem is right here, uh, you think that you get it once it gets into your tangible hands. But the Lord said, watch this, catch this in the realm of the spirit. If you will honor my requisition, I'll release it and you will have it before it gets in your hands. I still miss that. See, 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 you think that you you think your healing is once it manifests, bro, right there. But I come to tell you right now, the Lord, uh, see, for many of you, the requisition, the act of requiring is something simple. He said, Many of you, I just want to praise. For many of you, I just want you to open up your mouth and just bless me. That's why the scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Some of y'all, the problem is you won't even give him a praise. What happens when God is not requiring something? We're very difficult from you. Sometimes, right now in this season, right now, the only thing that he wants you to do is don't wait until the battle is over. He wants you to shout and praise him in advance. Do I have any advanced praisers? God, if you require the requisition for my provision, the action that you require, God said, I don't want nothing from you but praise right now. I don't, I just want you to praise me because if you're praise me with the fruit of your lips, watch this. I release it before you get it in your hands and watch this I, mm, I'll send confirmation to your spirit that it's already been released some of y'all better catch this right now it's already been released oh some of y'all better receive this it's already been released uh -huh. so very interesting now for the sake of time I'm going to go through this. Notice this now. Time that it takes, we know we have. God has blessed Abraham with Isaac. This is the son, the promised son, that was given to Abraham and Sarah in their old age. Mm. He just dropped this on me. Some of y'all, the Lord say, I was waiting to bless you so that the regular season could pass. You know, you know, the regular season, you know, Arthur, the regular season, you know, you know, at a certain point, you know, you, you know, by man's standard, you're not supposed to do certain things or get certain things. The Lord said, watch this for y'all, for, for y'all that are online that are catch this. He said, I'm waiting until man's regular season pass before my season come in. Man, y'all, y'all, y'all missed that again. Y'all, y'all missed that again. See, 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 see. Uh, this, oh, he just dropped this on me for you, Ella Jarvis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for man's regular season to pass. Uh, oh, mm, he just dropped this on me. Watch this. Receive this prophetic word. He said, you hadn't been overlooked. He said, you ain't overlooked. Now watch this. He said, some stuff they're not even going to see until, watch this, the time pass. What happens, watch this, when the Lord will allow a position to be filled so that you can run the whole company? Oh, y'all missed that. See, 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 see. Uh, oh, oh, uh, the Lord said, no longer am I feeling positions. Watch this. He said, I'm feeling authority. Oh, God, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. See, a lot of times we mess up because we're looking for a position. And God said, I don't want you in a position. I'm not putting you in authority. Are y'all hearing me? He said, we're looking, man is looking to fill a position. But God said, I'm putting you into a place of authority. I see, supervisor is good. Well, watch this. He said, I'm putting you above the supervisors. 
Oh, yeah, y'all, okay, 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 okay. Let me move on here, because I only got about 10 minutes. I got to release this in 10 minutes. Here's the challenge. Kiana, here's the challenge. The Lord required of Abraham, watch this, Kiki, to bless him with his blessing. Y'all, did y'all catch that? The Lord wanted Abraham qua, to bless him with what he blessed him with. Y'all still missed that. Watch this, Steve. The Lord wanted Abraham to bless him with what God had blessed him with. Sometime, could it be you... You finally received a blessing, not the blessing. You received a blessing, and you're holding on to your a blessing so long that you're going to miss the blessing. See, that's the problem. Some of y'all got your stimulus check, and you just, you, you, you just got just this, oh, Lord, I got that little $1,200, ain't nothing. The Lord said, you tripping on $1,200 when I want to give you thousands to lead to millions. Oh, so y'all y'all tripping. And so you you became tight and you you know you wouldn't give you you wouldn't give that twelve hundred back to the Lord so that he can give you millions. Woo, Lord have mercy. Okay. Well, watch this. The Lord required, watch this, Elder Sean. The Lord required Abraham to sacrifice Isaac as a not just an offering but as a burnt offering. Now that, that trickled my mind. So I had to go and start researching and studying, uh, watch this shade, burnt offerings. Oh, what's a burnt offering? A, a burnt offering was, means what is brought up. Burnt offering means by translation from Aramaic to Hebrew, it means what is brought up. It is presented to God as the highest order of sacrifice in the Old Testament. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. It's presented to God as the highest level, watch this, of sacrifice in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the, burnt, the, highest, the highest order of sacrifice in the t New Testament was Jesus. Okay, y'all still missed that. Uh, a burnt offering in the Old Testament, which means from Aramaic to Hebrew, what is brought up. In the Old Testament, a burnt offering was uh, was in the highest was the highest order of sacrifice that could be given. In the New Testament, the the highest sacrifice that could be given was Jesus. Watch this. In Abraham's life, the highest sacrifice that could be given uh, was Isaac because that's the thing, watch this, that God directly gave to him. What happens when God challenges you with what he gave you and want to know, watch this, will you give me your best? That trickled me. I was literally messed up in my head. I was to the point where I looked like this. I'm like, God, what are you saying here? Because normally, when God requires a burnt offering, it is a pardon for sin. It is an honor for atonement for the sins of that person. And normally what happened is when someone offered a burnt offering, the person offering the offering had to lay their own hands on the head of that offering as a way of saying, God, forgive me for this, this, this. But what happens, watch this, when God says, will you ask for my forgiveness even when you feel like you ain't did nothing? Oh, <laughs> y'all missed that because what had Abraham done at that time? Nothing. He hadn't done a thing. He still was honoring God. God told him to go, so he went. The challenge is, uh, the Lord say, will you ask for forgiveness 
even when you feel like you hadn't done that. Oh, God. Now, here's the challenge. And we're going to deal with this in the next six minutes. What Abraham found to replace his son. Let's go. Let, let me drop these points on you. Number one, hear me. Those of y'all that tune in, I'm teaching. I ain't hooping today. I don't holiday all that. Number one, y'all better catch this. Requisition for provision. Sometimes God will challenge you with what he blessed you with. Write that down. Sometimes God will challenge you with what he blessed you with. Number two, here it is. Whenever God asks something of you, he has already released the provisions to you. Let me say that again. When God asks something of you, he has already released the provisions to you. God asked Abraham for his son Isaac. And, and, God, and, and no doubt, I can just see Abraham as he's walking like, why is God asking this of me? But little do you know, watch this, God has already, you may think that God wants back what he gave to you, but in actuality, he don't, he's just testing you. God has already released a replacement for what you think he wants from you. He ain't gonna, God said, I'm not an Indian giver, I don't give, and then, you know, and then, you know, to, you know how some folks that give you something, they'll come back next week and, and want it back and all that kind of stuff, and you know, sometimes you just hate to go to people for stuff because you know, all that holding over your head Well, you know, I did this for you, I did that for you To the point where you like, you know what, I don't even want to ask you for that Okay, maybe I'm just talking to me But are there any real people, have you ever encountered those type folk Where you hate you just did so because they just held it over your head So, so the Lord said, uh, watch a little do you know That whenever I ask something of you I've already released a, a provision that you are not aware of to you To replace what you think I want from you which leads us to point number three. Sometimes you can't see the provision because you're looking at the problem. Sometimes you can't see the provision because you're too busy looking at the problem. What am I talking about? The Lord told Abraham, go to a place uh, in, the, in the region of Moriah, and I'm going to show you that mountain. Watch this. And, and, and they saw the mountain. They saw the mountain. Watch this, Elder Jarvis. They saw the mountain. Uh, they went to the mountain, him and some men with them. He told the men that were traveling with them, stay right here, for me and Isaac are about to go and do what the Lord says. Watch this. So as they're traveling to the place, the Bible says, watch this, that he saw the place afar off. Watch this. Isn't it so interesting? He saw the place are far off, uh, but he didn't see the ram that was already waiting on him. He saw the problem, but he didn't see the provision. I come to tell y'all better catch that. I come to tell somebody right now. Sometimes you can't see the provision because you're too busy looking at your. Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh, they here come this bill. Here come this thing. You know, broke down on I me. Mean, little do you know, God has already touched somebody's heart to be a blessing to you, but you can't see the provision because you're too busy looking at the problem. Which leads us to point number four so we can finish this because I only have a couple more minutes. Sometimes you can't see the provision because what you picture in your head isn't the product God will provide. What am I talking about? Normally when they use burnt offering, there were certain things that they used in worship for burnt offerings. Most of the time when they, when they, do, when they did burnt offerings, they only used goats and sheep and turtle doves and pigeons and all that kind of stuff. But watch this. Watch this. Let me repeat that again. Uh, sometimes you can't see the provision because what you picture in your head isn't the product God will provide. Let me say it again. Sometimes, most of the time, all the time, whenever they did a burnt offering, they use, everybody say bulls. Everybody say goats, everybody say sheep, everybody say turtle doves, and everybody say pigeons. But when you look at the scripture, when you look at the scripture, the scripture says, then Abraham looked up and saw a ram. Okay, okay, so, so, okay, y'all y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. <coughs> Sometimes, watch this, you can't see the provision, you can't see the provision of what's being, uh, what's there before you because you already pictured in your head what you think God's going to do. What In Abraham's head, Abraham didn't even think about a ram because in his head he already pictured a pigeon, a turtle dove, a goat. But he didn't think of a ram. What does that say to you? Take God out the box. Don't limit him to how he's going to do this thing. Then that leads me to point number five, and then we're done. Sometimes you can't see the provision because it's in places you wouldn't normally expect. 
Sometimes you can't see the provision because it's in places you would normally expect. What are we talking about? Abraham didn't expect that, first of all, he didn't expect to, to find a ram, to, to think that a ram, watch this Kiki, the ram was the sacrifice, the replacement. Then not only that, who would have ever thought that the sacrifice, the replacement, would be in bushes and thickets? Because I looked it up, I looked it up, this was very interesting, I looked it up, I looked it up, I said, what is a thicket? A thicket is a dense growth of shrubbery in small trees. He would have never thought to look in trees for a ram. Because rams don't go in trees like that. Because what, what happened, what happened, their horns, their antlers would get caught up. So, um, y'all better catch this. Sometimes you can't see the provision because it's in places you wouldn't normally think. This for all y'all thinking folks, Elder Sean. Those of y'all that just think too much, you, 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 uh, 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 Lady Bell, Sister Qua, Sister Victoria, Elder Courtney. This is for y'all that just think so much. You, you know, you got to think. You know, if it ain't making, if it ain't one plus one ain't two, you know, you ain't making it. You know, you can't see it. Shay, Emma, Raven, Kiana, Adriel, Steve, Tyler, Chris, Rodney. Sometime, God, I heard that, God has a blessing for you in a place where you don't think it is. He would have never thought to look in no bushes. But the Bible says it was in a place that he would normally expect. Finally, Here's the interesting thing. Requisition for your provision. The only way that he was going to see it, the Bible said that, and he looked up. Verse 13. Abraham looked up. Your problem is some of y'all head down. Because when he looked up three things, you'll see God's destined place. That's in verse 4. When he looked up, he saw the place where God was taking him. Second thing is, when you look up, when he looked up, you will see what God has set for you. You said in the verse 13, hey, God had a ram in bushes. But only when he looked up. Then finally, when he looked up, you will see what God used to secure your provision. You will see it. But only when you look up, you will see that requisition for, provi for uh, provision. But only when he looked up. Only when he looked up, I come to prophesy and tell you, look up. You're not going to see it looking down. That's your problem. Looking down. I need for y'all to type this in in my conclusion. Look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. Benjo, look up. Mother Mears, look up. Brother Willie, look up, sir. Look up. Because the moment you look up, it's the moment you will see your destined place, what God has for you, and you will see the place that God has your blessing in. Hey, listen. If you're here, you tune in, and you're not saved. Overseer, I, 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 I want to be saved. Well, just repeat after me. confess with my mouth that the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead for me and I believe it in my heart Satan I denounce you I denounce you this day if you said that according to the word you shall be saved but it doesn't stop right there I pray that those of you tune in if you don't have the Holy Ghost I pray now that you would receive the gift that was given on the day of Pentecost with power and whoa. 
walking in authority. Maybe you all are looking for covering. Covering now, we talked about fathers. We talked about that. That, that now that there's a need. You, you should be tired of preachers. And now it's time for fathers. If you felt this anointing and you want to connect with us, well, we see I'm in another place and you in this season, if we're not open to the change, you're going to miss it. This is the new norm, I, I, I believe now. But if you want to connect with us, we have a connection in our Life Connect partnership where you can connect with us and we'll be a part of this family if that's you. Because you need to be in a place where you can grow, a place where you can be free, and a place where the word is coming for the moving of God. I need you to type that in right now. I want to connect. And our elder of new members, Elder Patricia Harris, will make contact with you. I want to connect. I want to connect. Well, and I'm concluding, listen, if this broadcast blessed you, I want you now to prepare as the ushers are coming. Your tithe and your offering. Sow a seed right here into this anointing, into this ministry. You were blessed by the word. You were blessed by the, the praise and worship, the atmosphere that the Lord has given us here. Well, now, hey, listen, let's honor the Lord with our seeds. Tithe and offering. We have so many ways that you can give. We have our Givelify. You should see it there on your screen. We have our Givelify. Just go type in New Life International Ministries, Megan George, and you will see it. 1985 Vineville Avenue. Then we also have our cash app. You can give via our cash app. Our cash app identifier, you'll see it down the screen, is dollar sign new life INTL. Then we have our text to give. You'll see it down the screen. Our text to give number is 478 217 7262. When you get to the message portion of that text, just type in the numerical amount that you want to give. For instance, if you're giving one hundred dollars, just type in one zero zero, press send, and follow the prompts. Then, of course, those of you all that are not comfortable with our electronic giving, you can send to our PO box. You can send cashier's check, money order, or personal check to our PO box. Our PO box number is New Life International Ministries, PO Box six eight seven four, Macon, Georgia three one two zero eight. I thank each of you all for tuning in with us this morning. I pray that this experience has blessed you. Don't wait. Hey, come back and join us next Wednesday. This Wednesday, I'm sorry, at 7 p.m. for our Hour of Power Bible Study. I am the pastor overseer, Eric Bell. Thank you for tuning in because we know here at New Life, it's not just church. It's an experience. Thanks for tuning in.